today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble and lovable and squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Uh, well, we're up 40, let's call it 44 points on the SP cash. 2794, Dow's up 390 and 361. And the NASDAQ up 56. Um, and what I didn't want was to see this market go if we were thinking that things were going to get better. And everybody wants to think that the... Uh, that things are getting better, uh, was a light volume up into highs. Well, a little of both. I would have liked to see a little more volume, but it's not bad. 9.5 billion shares as we start the show. Uh, so, it, you know, it wasn't one of these days where we went up and we got 6 billion shares at this time and the end of the world was nigh. But uh, I would have liked to seen something around maybe, well, maybe 16 billion by the end of the day. We're not going to get that. Of course, the bond market uh, closed about uh, seven, eight minutes ago, and that's probably going to put the kibosh on any kind of volume for the rest of the day. Should be light and quiet. The only question I have is, uh, are we playing some kind of wild game of chicken in the last 10 minutes where everybody wants to get out of Dodge? Uh, right before uh, the weekend, and we have some kind of big movement. But uh, we'll see. Uh, for the most part, it's not as bad as I feared coming up here. Uh, that being said, um, we got out of one of our longer, what was going to be a longer-term position, and it made too much money. That's the problem. I had a trade that literally made too much money in a short period of time, and I've always burned, been burned by not taking the cash when that happens. Uh, there is, we kind of talked about that uh, whole thing, uh, Cinderfella and the, uh, and the three bears, where she has to uh, find the right temperature of porridge. One was too hot, one was too cold, one was just correct, just right, perfect on the porridge. So to me, we had two problems. One, it moved far too fast. And at the other time, uh, the volume was way too light. But you know what? It's the second time we bought this thing and made a big score on it. So uh, eh, I'm sure the uh, people in the Tech Insider are feeling good. Uh, feeling, what's it? Uh, can't remember his name now from Trading Places. Feeling good, Lewis? Feeling great? Something. I can't remember. Maybe somebody on the den. Anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always leave a message in the den. Um, so, anyway, volume better than hope, but not as good as we would like. Uh, going into a three-day weekend, you don't want to see uh, particularly stocks going up on light volume. So we'll have to see what happens at the end of the day. But, uh, eh, it's just tough. But um, we sold most of my short-term positions, or in fact, all of my short-term uh, positions uh, on the spike pre-market or right at the open on Wednesday. So I've pared back a huge amount of stuff that we bought off the lows. And... You know, what else can you say? Uh, someone's asking me here. So what is a good trade? Well, what do we buy at 66? And I put the order out to sell at 79. So a nice movement in, in a stock. It's not a bad 
thing to hold a stock for four or five days and make that kind of move in it. Unfortunately, those are generally unsustainable, and especially in markets like that, uh, uh, with very light volume point to short squeezes, then when those short squeezes are over, uh, you're going to need one or two things. Either it comes back down hard, or you start getting some consolidations. And neither of those sounded like appetizing levels. In fact, my one order, uh, when I put it in, was enough to almost break the entire stock. And I think probably other folks probably got a little less than 79 on it. Still a nice trade. But um, if you can break a market with one single trade, uh, you did the right thing by selling. And, uh, well, continue thinking about that over the weekend. Of course, we are going to have a three-day weekend. Uh, I always looked at those for two things, either a change of character or a change of direction. And if you tend to be uh, very up and downish, generally you'll start some kind of trend after a three day weekend in the summers. This one's a little less of, a, of that, but my guess is we'll still have at least a little bit uh, of a flavor change. And that is if we've been having these big swings, we'll probably have a lot of days in a row uh, with smaller movements going forward. If that's going higher or going lower, uh, that is kind of at least, uh, if we don't have a change in our direction, that's kind of at least what we're looking for. And that is, uh, it's, you know, we've had these big swings. It's easy, been easy to buy in the morning and sell, you know, sell the spike and move on. But that is probably going to change. You may have a lot more interday swings uh, up and down, or you may just have a very consistent move, but much smaller during the day. Uh, and uh, eh, might be like uh, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. That's what we were looking for. Um, and uh, what else? Uh, Lewis, Win Lewis and Winthorpe. Uh, always, uh, always fun. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Maybe it's time to. Rewatch it. All I get stuck uh, on is the uh, ape in the uh, in the uh, cage. Who doesn't think that that's a fake ape? I, I you can't look at that thing for one second and not believe that it, there's a human in it. And I can't believe her. That's the problem. No, I believed everything in the movie except the ape. That was a bridge too far for me. It, it broke my uh, my. Uh, uh, suspension of disbelief is what they like to say in the movies. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Well, we're getting ready to go to the break. Um, am I going to really read probably a whole lot into this? No, I'm probably going to sit on my hands for a few more days until I see what that character is when we come back, maybe by Monday or Tuesday. And of course, next Friday's options expiration and literally the option market makers are all worried about higher prices not lower prices at the moment which is uh, very uh, very interesting uh, they think this market could go a lot higher maybe that fed juice is uh, uh, laced with spinach like like uh, what was his name uh, I'm the sailor man hmm. guy with big muscles maybe that's it. it's laced with spinach that's it anyway we'll be back in a minute If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back and we're ready for a little history. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. I said history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Well, that sounded awful. I think I know the reason. I've had yet another flip, uh, switch to flip. Uh, anyway, on this day in 1865, in Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, uh, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrenders his 28,000 troops to the Union General Ulysses S. Grant effectively ending the American uncivil war, forced to abandon the Confederate capital of Richmond, blocked from joining his surviving Confederate force in the North Carolina, and harassed constantly by Union cavalry, Lee had no other options. And uh, finally put it to rest. But uh, you know, I always think, well, could it happen again? Could uh, the United States actually have another civil war? Yeah, I was kind of thinking maybe we were headed that way. Maybe we're not. Maybe we finally uh, have been saved uh, by a plague, but you never know. Okay, let's go ahead and start looking at uh, some charts here. We did start moving down a little bit in the S&P cash, and that's I thought maybe it'd be something like in the last few minutes of the day, but I have a feeling... Uh, that there's going to be a lot of people that are just going to want to, yeah, let's push all that money into uh, our, our pocket for the weekend. So I always was expecting maybe a little bit of selling, no matter what the Fed says about how much Fed juice they've got from Popeye. Uh, the sailor man who, of course, ate his spinach. Uh, of course, that was supposed to make you real, uh, uh, real uh, strong. Um, but you know what? Eh probably wasn't going to do that much for you. I remember the big lie in World War II to cover up for radar uh, was that uh, you could get uh, 120 vision if you ate a lot of carrots. And that's what they were passing off as the cover story to the Germans uh, on uh, how they were shooting down so many of their planes. Uh, and uh, everybody started eating carrots to the point where they got sick. Eating uh, too much carrots got a vitamin in it that can literally 
uh, I think it can kill you, if I'm not mistaken. I know it can be bad for you. Maybe it can kill you. Anyway, uh, we're just up 35 points now. Uh, let's go ahead and just update that so I get the, uh, yeah. Uh, we're up 34 points now, or 35 points now. 27.85 on the S&P cash. Uh, got a first question in today about Microsoft. I haven't looked at that yet. Let's go ahead and turn that off and this on. There aren't going to be many Gartleys uh, coming in the near future, by the way. <laughs> You're gonna, all these moves are far in advance of anything uh, for Fibonacci ratios and equities. Uh, it's been, what, five or six days since we've had one. You're not going to get any, probably going to be another week or two before we start seeing more of them. Microsoft is kind of going sideways out here. Um, I wrote a fairly, well, actually a fairly short little blurb in Microsoft and how they continue uh, to execute like they did in the 90s and why they're doing so well. But, uh, you know, you, you got up there in the last couple of days. Uh, you wanted to have something in the neighborhood of 72 million shares from the 6th of, of March. He had 72, or six, excuse me, 62 million shares on the 7th. So you weren't that far off. Uh, so not a real sell signal, about 10 million shares short. But at the same time, everybody's going to look at it as the leader. Uh, to, to, okay, Popper the Sailor Man, yes, we know that. Okay. Uh, if the oil tank or oil talks fail and oil prices reverse, uh, which companies that are up a lot recently on short covering would you look at shorting or buying or putting shorts on? I wouldn't. I'm not a. I'm not somebody that is a headline trader, uh, mostly because I don't know what those headlines are going to be. You can get uh, that they failed, and an hour later you get it and you get whacked. Um, I tend to be in a lot of stocks that people aren't talking about all the time. Uh, the reason for that is good. If you got a trend in it. Maybe you get a news article on it, but uh, if the press is not consumed by always talking about a particular stock, then generally I have a much better uh, uh, batting average at seeing what these things are doing. Uh, when I'm always in Microsoft or Apple or some of these other ones, uh, you have a lot of people that have a lot of reasons uh, to put out uh, propaganda. I always remember the Godfather movie. Uh, where Michael uh, has his jaw broken, but he's talking to the guys, and he goes, uh, yeah, we're talking about a, uh, you can't kill a cop. We're talking about a cop that got messed up in drugs, got messed up in the mob, got what uh, coming to him. The press, they like a story like that, right? We got people, you know, we got people on the payroll down there, right? Yeah, yeah. They like a story like that, caught up. Uh, in drugs, got what he deserved. Yeah. So, you know, there's always a reason out there that the press may uh, help somebody out. Who knows? Maybe they get a nice uh, dinner at Spago's uh, minus the lead out on the front uh, uh, sidewalk, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, I think it was, it was it Spago's. I want to think it was, it was Spago's. Uh, maybe it was another one. It was a steakhouse there. Uh, but uh, that's it. We, uh, you can always, uh, oh, can turn your skin orange. I knew that. But I, th I think, I knew that two things. I know that uh, uh, eating too much liver can kill you because the guys up uh, on the North Pole ran out of food and they ate their dogs. And the first thing they did was eat the dog's liver. And they all, by the time when they ate about seven days worth of liver, they died. Um it's got a, I forget what vitamin's in it. Maybe it's vitamin A2. Can't remember. Anyway, all things in moderation. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, for oil and uh, others, I have a hard time uh, unless I see a real trend developing. I don't want to see people coming in and telling me all kinds of things uh, and that uh, liver's rich in iron. It is. And if you eat nothing but liver, but it will kill you, or at least dog livers. But I think they're all the same. Uh, eat a filter. It's a liver, L-I-V-E-R. Uh, okay. Uh, 
I'm just looking through all our emails here and see if there's anything here. Okay. Basil has a interday webinar next week. I talked to him this morning. We had a very good conversation. What else is going on? Okay. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of uh, headline-driven uh, products. And again, at any point you can get and get blown out. Um, I tend to think, look at things that uh, don't have a lot of news and have a good chart pattern and that you can dance to. That's the way I'm going. I don't hear anything. Do you have any audio? There we go. Be back in a minute. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And the uh, first question, or not first question, but first question about options uh, comes in. And the question is in B. Uh, what do uh, NVIDIA options look like last uh, next week, e, uh, NVDA? Okay. I have not looked, but we shall see. Well, uh, everybody's buying downside protection. Um, that's it. There's. It just looks like a line straight down to 150. So... Uh, they're not too worried about it being lower, but 
but uh, options really, they're not, no one really was selling puts uh, to any effect because literally the crossover is at 150 bucks. So um, if you, you know, if you want to go counter to it, you could go short, but there isn't that much money on the upside either. Uh, this kind of chart, I'll show it to you here, not real predictive for NVIDIA. Now, maybe that changes today. Uh, of course, since we had a shortened week between expiration uh, and uh, the Delta neutral day, we may still be seeing some of that already. Uh, but I didn't see anything that really told me one way or the other in options. Uh, but uh, my guess is that we'll probably have a lot of action on Monday, and I'll probably get a better read on it. We'll talk about it then. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, something here. I don't know. Has GDX topped? GDX. Well, you don't have a lot of volume. Uh, the test would be of March 6, 2997. So you still have a little bit higher to go. My guess is in this move and the gap higher, uh, this would be, well, you've got three decent sized gaps on the upside. You may even look at it at four. Uh, but my guess is that 2997 with 81 million shares, you kind of just touched it today. You might get one more move in it. Uh, and then 3184 of February 24th, you could just get sucked right up into those. And generally, um, gold miners have a following that is uh, along the lines of mania. Uh, and uh, if they have to push it with one share across the top, you're probably looking in that 29.97 to 31.84 high, even with the lighter volume today. But uh, let's take a look at it Monday. But I wouldn't say that there's a lot of reasons to run just yet. You're back into a candle. Like I said, uh, again, I'll have 81 million shares. You're into it for 36, 37. Depends on, you know, where I was long this thing. Uh, the question is, you know, where were you going to sell it anyway? Are you just getting greedy? Are you being piggy? Uh, were you planning on selling it here anyway? Uh, or are you waiting for a retrace? You never know. But uh, my guess is that you probably come Monday morning, 29.97. Man, I'd like, you know, if you were going to, thinking about going short, it doesn't look that bad to top out. Generally, gold at both the bottoms and the tops, though, goes a little bit farther, even on uh, bad patterns. So with the light volume today, I'd still want to see 29.97, maybe even 30, and, no, and you know, just nothing for volume. Uh, but uh, when we look at the power law vector indicator, this is where this thing really shines. From the March 18th low to the March 26th high, I have a 37 for the energy between those two legs. Uh, almost the same size leg from April 1st uh, to today's high gets you about half that same energy. And you, can, you don't need my number to do that. You just look at the uh, volumes uh, coming all the way back up to these highs. Um, since that down day on the 18th, you really haven't had a lot of juice. Uh, if I was long this, I'd have to highly consider uh, whether or not I was just getting a little piggy. And of course, at the end of every day uh, of broadcasting across TFNN, I say, so when you can, not when you have to. And for me, is it probably going to 29.97? I'd say probably 60, 65 percent, because these things just go a little longer, even on poor volume than you would think. But at the same time, I tend to sell when I can, and I would probably take the cash and money and run and uh, wait for some kind of pullback uh, to find it. Now, luckily, or you know, 25, 26 bucks. Looks to me like where this thing would probably pull back to a little bit of consolidation. In fact, this entire market 
needs to probably have a little bit of a pullback and some consolidation before we're next uh, ready to go. Whether you're a bull or a bear, we're either going to consolidate out and go higher or lower. But I would decide that after the consolidation. Uh, to, 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 okay. What else? Do we have anything? Da, 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 da. Uh, okay. Could be. Uh, okay. What else do we have? Question about the SMHs coming across the email. Um, yeah, I think this whole market, everywhere I look, uh, you're getting back into areas where if you are long, uh, you could see some kind of stop. I know the Fed's going to try to jawbone the market higher. Uh, that's why I wouldn't go short at the close today, although I think we could continue to see weakness uh, into the close that could just have us uh, come out and close at 2750, which has been kind of the resistance uh, level that I've been looking at. Uh, so that we went to what, 2815 or something today is not uncommon to overshoot, especially with so many people. Uh, so focused on the end of the world, they're going to short this. And of course, people are going to take them to the cleaners uh, in the short squeezes before uh, the turn is really low. So I would add a little bit of extra margin, like I said, both in gold. The SMHs don't look really bad here. The energy up in the first leg is only mildly uh, more than the leg that we've just had up, uh, up to here to 129. 64. Uh, you are, though, at fairly significant resistance. Uh, it depends on whether you're trading or whether you're investing. If you bought at the lows at 96 in the SMHs, uh, you got to sit on your hands and just hope that the market improves the rest of the year. Uh, if you were trading and bought anywhere, at some point, you better have had a target. And if it's hit that target and you didn't sell, it's time to look in the mirror. Who's that man in the mirror? Uh, to, 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 don't be, don't be piggy. That old saying does, there, there's a reason for all the old chestnuts in the stock market. Uh, like, uh, bulls and bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. Um, oh, I forgot, I was going to actually even bring this up earlier in the day. There was a guy that we had on TFNN around 2000 or 2001. I'm going to bring up his story when we come back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And I'm going to talk about somebody that I can't remember their name. All I remember was the guy was like a mortgage broker or had something to do uh, with the uh, with real estate, but was a trader. And he was in, I want to say it was in wheat, and it was circa 1999, 2000, if memory serves me correct. Uh, he had put $20,000 into a contract. I think it was like, one contract or a couple, it wasn't much. Uh, and the thing just took off and it went to one and a half, I think $20,000 turned to one and a half million dollars. Uh, and he was looking at the very end uh, of the day of whether or not he should sell into it. And he thought, oh, I'll let it run one more day. And <laughs> it closed limit down like four or five days in a row to the point where he actually had a losing trade and lost the 20 grand. Uh, that was a story that will, maybe somebody in the den remembers what the guy's name was. I don't, I just, it's 20 years ago is too long. Uh, but it was one of those things that stuck in my head uh, when I was, uh, uh, working with a uh, floor trader in Chicago in options, I worked out uh, some of the things for uh, trading uh, options into expiration. And back then, uh, especially in the uh, uh, in things other uh, than uh, the S and P, the OEX, uh, you could really, I mean, they there was a problem in it. Uh, a problem with it that will let you really uh, exploit the end of the options expiration. And that only lasted for like two or three years, but it was kind of the exact same thing. And I wrote the article in Stocks and Commodities in Christmas of 2004, uh, kind of about it. Uh, but uh, I think I've got that if anybody wants a, a copy of it, I'll email them the PDF. But on the OD OEX, it was uh, like as, as Tom said, uh, he sent several kids through all of college on a couple of Friday trades uh, in the OEX uh, during expiration. Uh, but you could make a huge move on those things. But uh, it, it was one of these things where they fixed it uh, because, of course, uh, it ended up being a big loser for them. But it was it was one of those mathematical things like counting cards. In, uh, in Las Vegas. Eventually, they figured it out. They added more cards. They changed the way it works. Same thing with uh, the VIX. They made it much harder uh, to drive the VIX to the kind of levels that we saw in the past. They changed that in 2012. And I think it fully went into uh, implementation in 2015. So it's kind of hard to compare the VIX before they made the changes in it and after. But uh, not a lot of people trading the OEX anymore. Is it, can you even trade it? I can't even remember. But uh, that was it. But uh, Tom O'Brien probably remembers the guy's name that had that uh, contract that went to whatever it was, $220,000 to $1.5 back to zero. Um, 
but uh, uh, I don't know. Can I say you just deserve to probably get it taken away from you? Uh, I don't know what he's done in the in the uh, in the other in the rest of his life because I think that was the last time I heard him. But uh, it is a lesson for all traders to remember. But uh, eh, what else are you doing? Okay, okay. See, I got a couple more emails here. Uh, two, 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 two. Okay, okay. Basil Chapman has a deal on Wednesday. We'll look forward to that. Oh, somebody in the den saying that uh, Micron doing a little bit of a reversal uh, out here. So let's take a look at that. Uh, certainly, you did open at the highs and are kind of coming back down. Uh, you gapped down with 31.2 million shares on the 9th. Um, last couple of days, 34 million, 27 million. Today, down on 23 million. Um, you know what I'd really love to see in Micron? And that is something at around the $42 level, uh, maybe a little higher. This gap higher is probably where support's going to be. That's from the uh, gap higher on the 6 with 30 Let's call it 38 million shares. Uh, the low of the day was 43.34, so probably 44-ish uh, looks to me. But you could easily kind of come back on that one. Um, a lot of people continue to ask me why uh, semiconductors continue to do well uh, in this market, and that is that Taiwan uh, had uh, a fairly good idea and fear of China that a lot of people were overlooking. Um, in fact, on Zoom, I, did we talk about this yesterday? Uh, the Taiwanese made sure that on Zoom that it was illegal to use it, uh, I think back in January, uh, when, they, when everybody figured out that it was taking all the data and rerouting it uh, through a server in China. And, and of course, uh, China always looking uh, at any opportunity to invade Taiwan and take it they think take it back uh, is always an issue. But uh, I, um, almost all of this stuff has to do with uh, Taiwan's early, uh, uh, what would you call it, suspicion uh, that uh, China was lying to them. I also think they have a lot of people that go back and forth. They take the same, they talk the same language that are probably they heard more anecdotal stories about the sickness in Wuhan province uh, and acted a lot sooner. They didn't really tell everybody else in the world to, to uh, do that, but themselves, uh, they did two things. They uh, made sure that uh, uh, they had covered a lot of their bases for China to steal their technology on products like Zoom and uh, acted or very early uh, to limit the amount of people from China that could come in the country. And they were doing that back in January uh, with fear of it. So they're pretty much, I, I'm going to say 99% uh, virus free is what their newspapers are saying. Uh, they have a very low infection rate, but they uh, nipped it at the bud to begin with. And uh, they've been very active. And of course, a great deal of these places that, uh, that uh, make chips uh, in Taiwan I don't know if you could get the coronavirus if someone was standing next to you. These things are clean rooms. The uh, air is always being sucked through at an amazing rate. Uh, it's always being cleaned. Uh, they've got ultraviolet lights to make sure that uh, the humans don't uh, expunge anything into the atmosphere that can get into the chips. Uh, and of course, a lot of those things just run 24 hours without any humans inside of it. Uh, once they get it set up and running, uh, it takes an enormous uh, time. That's it. Uh, Taiwan is Chinese cash cow. They would love to get it back. Uh, it's making them look bad, I think, in one of the reasons. Okay, we're now just up uh, 25 points on the SP cash. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to come back close flattish on the end of the day. Well, I thought maybe it all happened in the last 10 minutes. Eh. Not going to happen. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the open call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get going here, uh, a good comment in the den, and that is uh, we've got uh, earnings coming up starting next week. Um, the question is, how baked in are bad numbers already? Are they baked in as uh, much as the unemployment numbers? Is everybody just going to say, okay, with uh, a 25% discount uh, or a 50% discount from prices at the end of January uh, when the last earnings came out, are that is that enough? I think that there's some of that. Um, there's also uh, this, and that is that a lot of times when things go south, uh, a lot of CEOs decide to throw all the dirty laundry that they can, including the kitchen sink, to clean out. This is a great excuse uh, to get rid of all the phony accounting that you had. Just blame it all on the virus. I think there's going to be a little bit of that, too. Uh, but uh, at the same time, after the, it goes down, would it be long? Stocks into earnings, I mean, that would be pretty tough. I'd have to have some very good clarity. But I have a feeling that a lot of people will buy the dip, assuming that uh, they have thrown in the kitchen sink on bad accounting principles that may or may not last. But I have a feeling the buy the dip and sell the rip is probably going to be on as we go through uh, earnings next week. And... Uh, uh, let me do this. Okay. 
is a good thing because I was actually thinking about getting everything working here. And uh, eh, I got something running here right at the moment. And maybe uh, I wonder if Tom's back in. Maybe he knows uh, the gentleman that had that trade with uh, $20,000 worth of wheat or whatever that was on TFNN that ended up going a million and a half and back to zero. Maybe he... Uh, Maybe he remembers that guy's name. Maybe he'll bring it back up. But always reminded me to sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll be back here Monday. Have fun. And again, same bat channel, same bat time.